before we go into the next part of the video, um, what we just have to cover here is we have to summarize what we have studied so far. So what we have is the axon. And along the axon, well, you can see the cell surface membrane. And along the, on the cell surface membrane, there were three types of transport proteins. There was the sodium ion potassium ion pump, the voltage-gated sodium ion channels, and the voltage-gated potassium ion channels. So before the axon is able to send the electrical impulse, it first has to create and maintain a resting membrane potential. This is done using the sodium ion potassium ion pump, which is powered by ATP. When ATP powers the pump, it will actively transport out three sodium ions and two potassium ions continuously, which makes the voltage outside higher and the voltage inside lower. And it also creates the ionic gradient, uh, where there is a difference in the sodium ion concentration and the potassium ion concentration. I'm just writing it over there. And this will create the resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. Then what happens when the axon is stimulated? Um, the voltage-gated sodium ion channels open and sodium ions will diffuse in uh, through facilitated diffusion, thus making the inside have a higher voltage than the outside represented with those positive inside, negative outside, and this is called depolarization. But depolarization only happens for a short amount of time because once it reaches positive 30 millivolts, the sodium ion channel will close and the voltage-gated potassium ion channel opens and thus potassium ion rushes out and then it kind of hyperpolarizes where it goes beyond about it goes beyond negative 70 millivolts but after a while it will then return back to normal the period when it returns back to normal after the hyperpolarization is called the refractory period we've covered that in the previous video so that's cool so as you can see here i'm just drawing out the axon again and as you can see the pink color line is just you know i'm just dividing the axon into different parts i'll, I'll explain that later as you can see here, the axon at the beginning is negative 70 millivolts. When it gets stimulated, only that part of the axon will depolarize first, right? Because only that one becomes positive 30. And then after it depolarizes, it will return back to normal. Uh, it, it will hyper, it will repolarize to about negative 80. And then from negative 80, it returns back to negative 70. So this is a time lapse of what happens at that part of the axon. What we've just studied earlier in the beginning part of this video, I'm just now putting it back again. But now we are looking at the axon not just as a single section, but as a long structure. Because the axon is something that is quite long, correct? So... Here, what I just want you to focus on is the part we have highlighted. So you can see that that part of the axon is depolarized, correct? And normally what happens when one part of the axon depolarizes? The next part of the axon will depolarize, causing the next part of the axon to depolarize. That movement of the depolarization, so as you can see here, first the depolarization happens here, then it happens here, then it happens there. That's the action potential that is basically moving along the axon. But the question here is as follows how exactly or what causes the depolarization we know what causes the depolarization to happen here that's fine but what causes the depolarization to move along the axon that is the thing that we have to cover over here for today and this is going to be slightly complicated so let's you know try to uncomplicate it <laughs> so uh, to keep it very simple, what I just want you to see here is I'm drawing out a long axon. I say long, but it's not really that long. And I've divided the axon into three parts. That pink dotted line does not actually exist, by the way. I just need to remind you of that. It's just the reason why I put those pink dotted lines is to divide the axon into specific sections. But they are just one continuous thing, okay? And those things on the cell surface membrane are represented as the voltage sodium ion channels. We just focus on the sodium ion channels in this case. Um, even though in reality there will be the pump and also the potassium ion channels as well. So remember when the axon is trying to create the resting membrane potential it will pump out three sodium ions. We talked about this uh, for the for the umpteen 
I think I think I've repeated myself like a broken record and it, that even I'm sick and tired of talking about it. But yeah, so I just need to remind you that uh, during when it wants to create the resting membrane potential, the sodium ion potassium ion pump will pump up three sodium ions, pump in two potassium ions. But again, remember, we are just focusing on the sodium ions. So it creates the concentration gradient where the outside has a higher sodium ion concentration and the inside has a lower sodium ion concentration. So as you can see here, all parts of the axon are maintaining a resting membrane potential. So far, so good. Now, when the stimulus happens at that part on the left over there, what actually happens first when the stimulus is exerted? it will cause the sodium ion channels to open. Now, notice something very interesting. Not all the sodium ion channels along the axon open simultaneously. That's not how it works. It's only the part which is closest to the, to the stimulus that will open first. So, in that case, when the sodium ion channels open, what happens? Obviously, the sodium ions will diffuse into the axon from a high concentration outside to a low concentration inside, and this causes the membrane to depolarize, or one section of the axon depolarizes. Only that section depolarizes first. I need you to understand that. Did all of the axon depolarize simultaneously? No. Only one section depolarizes first. Okay, this is good. So, let's zoom in to that part of the axon. Now, I just want you to focus on the sodium ion concentration on this part of the axon right now, and also this part of the axon, the two parts where I'm circling. You notice that the part on the left has a higher concentration and the part on the right has a lower concentration. So the sodium ions, just like most things in our universe, they will move from an area of higher concentration to lower concentration. This is a form of diffusion. As some of the sodium ions move into that part of the axon, it causes the next part to receive more ions. So, the, so the ne that section of the axon starts to become slightly more positive. And when it becomes slightly more positive, what happens? It causes the sodium ion channels there to also open. And when they open, sodium ion from outside starts to rush in, which causes the membrane to depolarize. That's how it happens, okay? And then again, what happens? So the next section basically depolarizes. So you might be thinking, how the hell am I going to mention this in the exam? You might be thinking, how the hell do I explain the sodium ions from one section of the axon moves into the other section of the axon, which causes the so voltage-gated sodium ion channels to open? Now, you might be thinking, do I have to explain it like that? No, you don't have to. We have compressed it into two very simple words. It's called the local circuit. The local circuit will cause the next section of the axon to depolarize. What exactly is the local circuit? The local circuit is just the movement of the sodium ions from one section of the axon to the other, which causes the voltage-gated channels to open. So in the exam, just basically say the local circuits will cause the next section of the axon to depolarize. That's basically it. Okay, then you might be thinking, why the hell did I explain everything then? Well, you know, I have a problem. I just wanted to explain it. So <laughs> what are you going to do? Sue me? Okay, anyway. <laughs> so uh, let's just talk about it again. Uh, so as you can see here, all the, I'm just drawing the axon, the same axon, but time lapse. All the parts of the axon are just maintaining a resting membrane potential first. Okay, and then due to a stimulus at that part, the membrane of that part of the axon depolarizes because sodium ion rushes in. Good. Okay. Now, some of the sodium ions will then diffuse into the next part of the axon, but we just have to say the word, the local current is produced, and the local current causes the next section of the axon to depolarize. That's all you have to know. And what happens to the previous section, by the way? The first section that depolarized will undergo repolarization, okay? And then what happens next? The third section depolarizes, the second section repolarizes, and the first section returns back to its resting membrane potential. And this process happens all the way. So as you can see here, if I were to just draw this out again in a long section, so all of them are just at resting membrane potential. When one section undergoes... um 
the stimulus, it depolarizes, okay, which causes the next section to depolarize due to local currents, and then the previous section repolarizes, okay, and then after that it travels along the axon. Look, so look at the wording, okay, depolarization, depol, repolarization, repol, and then during repolarization and resting membrane potential, there is a small period of refractory period, by the way. So I am just putting the refractory period over there for you, just as a reminder too. So that's how it works. That's how the action potential moves along the axon. When one section of the axon depolarizes, it produces a local current which causes the next section to depolarize, and therefore the action potential travels along the axon, from one end of the axon to the other end of the axon, by the way.